17. Now, I mentioned earlier, if you are not signed up for the Virginia trip, we will leave Thursday the 27th, probably around lunchtime, and then uh, returning home late, 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 late Saturday night. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, can't wait. Last year, we had the best time ever was. You know, sometimes when I announce this stuff, some of y'all, I guess you got the idea of just, well, you're just going up there and it's hot and you're going to sit in church for an hour. And you don't realize how much fun we have on these trips. Camp, this beach, beach, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, 99 out of 100 kids, if you ask them, they'd rather go to Disney World or camp, they'd go to camp. Guarantee you. And, uh, uh, girls, uh, we just have a, it's just so many unexpected things happen. We have games, we have a lot of, uh, we'll cut up together and have a good time. And of course, the services, that's what makes it good. Life changing services. And we had some up there last year. So we're excited about it. Acts chapter 17. Now, uh, the, the apostle Paul was a man that got saved. He was a very educated man and got saved and started preaching the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And everywhere Paul went, he was giving his testimony. I've heard preachers say, you knew that. They say, well, I, I, heard, I, pe- I heard people say, well, I don't want to just give my testimony. I'll preach the word of God. Well, you're supposed to do both. Every Paul jumped up. He was telling what happened to him. There is nothing wrong with that. It's very, very smart. And then he'd preach the word to him and mix it in. So here he is at uh, Mars Hill and talking to these Greeks and Athenians and strangers and very educated people, and I want you to look what he said. Look at Acts 17 and verse number, uh, let's see, 22. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. That's what I'm going to preach about tonight. Hold your finger. For as I passed by, and beheld your devotions, as out there having devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I. I'm just saying. Think about that. Paul looked up and he's going down to there and he sees, sees an altar and it said, these, these offerings are to the unknown God. We don't know him, don't know who he is, but we, we're going to worship him. And he said, uh, that's a bunch of superstitious nonsense. And he said, you ignorantly worship him. Verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temple made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. I'll stop right there. Um, uh, well, let, let's go ahead and read that. And I've made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of all the earth and have determined the time appointed the bounds of their habitation. Why? That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. For as much as we are the offspring of God we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art, a man's device. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. The word I want to look at tonight is superstitious. Back there in verse 22. I think it's in the Bible three times. I've never heard a preacher preach a sermon on superstition. I'm sure it's happened. I did get a lesson on it here about eight or nine, eight, nine years ago, something like that. But uh, here is a big shot, educated governor and ruler, Athens, Greek, the smartest educated people in the world, ignorantly worshiping a false god, and here's a gospel preacher saying, you're too superstitious. Isn't it usually the other way around? The other way around, usually it's the big shot, educated, rich, well-to-do, movie star, highfalutin people that are pointing at Christians saying, y'all are superstitious. But we're not the ones that carry crystals around in our pocket. 
like like my, the movie stars and like the big business. There's businessmen all over Chicago and Atlanta and everything that hold crystals in their po- pockets. And when they go in to get a job or interview, thinking it will neutralize all the negativity in the room. <laughs> Don't talk to us about being superstitious. They're idiots sitting around out there doing their fingers like this with their legs crossed thinking that it's going to help them and meditating. There are basketball players who think if they wear these certain shorts underneath their regular shorts that they'll automatically do better. That's what Michael Jordan always did. You know what that is? That's a bunch of baloney. As a matter of fact, you might could jump that higher if you didn't have on two pairs of shorts. Uh, they have, well, I had my certain socks, and the last time I wore these socks, I scored 35, and I'm going to wear these socks every time because those socks brought me good luck. Now, I'm going to tell you something tonight. Those socks never brought you nothing. Uh, those special shorts never brought you nothing. Uh, taking a certain road to work and, and instead of going your regular road will not help you. And I understand. I understand when you do something good and, and it seems like you do good, you think, well, I'm going to do that again. Uh, but really, I mean, rubbing a cross uh, on your neck and, and holding your cross uh, when you're in bad shape is an absolute waste of time and energy. Amen. Uh, now, some superstitions are built and borrowed from biblical truths. And it gets all tangled up because the medieval beliefs in them and they're satanic. But some of them have Bible roots in them, and we'll talk about that tonight. So actually what I'm going to do tonight is give you a little lesson on superstition. What does that word mean, super, super, like supernatural? Like, uh, I don't know how superstitious you are. I'm sure there's people in here that are. There are a lot of people all over these mountains that are very superstitious. Some of our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents were extremely superstitious. Now, I'm not trying to make fun of them, but... They were ignorant, really, in, in Bible truth. He said, I wouldn't say that, Brother Danny. Uh, I, I know a man that walked under a ladder, and he got killed a week later. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I, there's a bunch of men that, walked, that didn't walk under a ladder got killed, too. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. I mean, about, listen, it don't bother me one bit. There's a ladder right here. I'll just walk under and say, glory to God, hallelujah. You know what it means? Absolutely nothing. I said Nothing. Amen. If a black cat runs across the road in front of you, you know what? I know what I'd do. I, I, I shouldn't say that, you animal lovers. Uh, I'm just kidding. I really am just kidding. Uh, but listen, brother, if a black cat runs across the road in front of you, you know what that means? Nothing. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> yeah. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. We'll get to it. Superstition. That means supernatural, something supernatural. That means some kind of help from some supernatural force, be he God or devil or whatever it is. Now, Paul told these people, he said, you're worshiping, but you are ignorantly worshiping. If people go to uh, some kind of sin or mosque or something all over this world every week and ignorantly worship uh, a false god. Ignorantly. It is not It is not enough just to worship. You must worship in spirit and in truth. They ignorantly worship him. Now, uh, there are people who think uh, that when they walk in a building, they feel holy. They really do. They think, well, when I just walked in here, I, I just feel holy. Now, there is a little bit of truth to that. Sometimes you can walk in and feel the presence of God. Sometimes you get, a, 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 like the place where I got saved, I'll be honest with you, I got a sentimental attachment to that place, Nebo Baptist Church, the place I got saved. We're like that with that camp up there in Tennessee. All of us, we, there's just something about that place. We all have an emotional, sentimental attachment to it. Nothing holy about that place. It's what God did for us there that makes us that way. But beware, beware of thinking that you're supposed to sit in a certain seat or you won't get a blessing or uh, act a certain way or eat a certain meal before you go to church to feel God. No, 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 no. That, that's a bunch of bull. Uh, rubbing beads, Hail Mary. You know where you get that thing and you throw a football and say, well, I just, I just threw a Hail Mary. What that means is 
uh, I, I, I really took a chance. I had no idea if it worked. I just threw it and hoped for the best. Hail Mary. There, that's a Catholic uh, tradition that says, Hail Mary, we honor Mary somehow or another, and it'll make that pass go right into that feller's hand, and he'll catch it. Uh, that Now, uh, I don't deny, I do not deny that you might get a little help from the devil. I don't deny that. Uh, but a Christian has no business fooling with stuff like that. A Christian has no business fooling with stuff that's not scriptural and dependent on luck, Lucifer, L-U-C, luck, to give us some kind of help, supernatural, to, to do stuff in our life. Now, uh, they say if you blow out all the candles on your birthday cake and make a wish that you will get the wish that you get. Uh, that is baloney with a capital B. Amen. Uh, they say uh, to prevent unwanted guests from returning, sweep the room that they were in after they leave and they won't come back. Uh, uh, they say uh, if you got a real bad cough, you can take a hair out of your head and put it in a, a buttered piece of bread and feed it to the dog and you'll stay well. And you say it as you give it to the dog, you say, eat well, you hound. May you be sick and I be sound. They say, if your nose itches, company's coming. Now, how many of you have heard that? Raise your hand. Where, where'd that come from? Now, my nose felt weird sights so they got there, some of them. And your, and your nose give you a burning sensation after the company comes. <laughs> but uh, but it, uh, the, your nose itching or, or your ears burning. Somebody talking about you, what does that mean? Your ears burning or t itching or ringing or burning. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, I, my ears burning. Somebody talking about me. Uh, my nose itching. Got company coming. Now, you may be sitting there saying, well, oh, Brother Danny, you better not talk because that's superstitious, people. That ain't the Bible. There's no scriptural foundation for that whatsoever. You say, well, my name is in company. Well, that don't mean nothing. You could, have, you could have a toe jam and have company come. That don't mean nothing. Get your, get your belief settled in biblical truth. Amen? If, if the first, first butterfly is, is that you see that, that year is white, you'll have good luck that entire year. Uh, and then you say, wish I may, wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Wish I may, wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. No, that's, that's demonic chanting. That sounds like something in a witch movie. Amen? Amen? They say, don't tell your wish or it won't come true. People say this, uh, I'm, tell I'm telling the truth. No, you're not. I cross my heart and hope to die. I don't believe I'd say that if I was you. X out your heart and hope to die? What's the world wrong with you, you superstitious nut? Listen, you don't put a cross on your heart. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, a cross is a sign of a curse. Cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. Now, I know people wear a cross around there. I'm not against it. You do it for the right reason, and you honor them. I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong, but all these, why do all these movie stars and rock singers only want to wear crosses? They're somehow attractive. If you really want to be shouting ground, wear an empty tomb around there with a, cha with a chain around it. That's what you ought to shout about. Uh, the cross, he was cursed, hang, hung on that tree. But I'm not saying it's wrong to wear a cross. Go ahead. I don't say it's wrong to put a cross. I put one up on the hill because people don't know that uh, if, if we wanted to. But uh, you got to understand that. They say, uh, um, if you wear new clothes on Easter Sunday, it means you'll have good luck. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. For years and years and years, I always try, we used to try to get the girls an uh, Easter dress. Always. Did every year. There's something special. Uh, uh, I want a, at least a tie or a shirt or at least a new pair of shoes or something to wear new on Easter Sunday. Maybe maybe that tradition goes back to new life or the resurrection or something. Maybe it don't, I don't know that. But honestly, it don't mean nothing. It means absolutely nothing to wear new clothes on Easter Sunday. They say if you cut your hair on Good Friday, uh, it will prevent headaches. 
I don't know if that's true. I'd try that. I'll try that. Just take goody powder. Uh, 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 they say this. I, have you ever heard people say, don't pull that. I, I got a gray hair. Don't pull it out because 10 more will grow right back in his place. That is not true. 10 more will grow back whether you pull it or not. You get an old freak. Amen. Amen. It don't matter if you pull it out. 10 more hairs, gray hair is still going to grow. They say if you cut your beard, if you shave your beard, it'll grow back thicker. That ain't true either. It's scientifically proven it don't make more hair grow out if you cut them. That's crazy. I don't, that's, that's unbelievable to be dumb. Uh, they say if you catch a fallen leaf on the first day of fall, you won't catch a cold that, that winter. Try that. You're wasting time. Uh, it, it's fun to try to catch leaves. We do it every year, but it won't do you no good. If a young girl catches a ladybug and lets it go, whatever direction that ladybug flies in will be the direction her future husband is coming from. I guess for them, they all fly toward the prison. <laughs> but, uh, but, but whatever direction that ladybug flies in, <laughs> it's awful, and uh, fly toward the crack house. Uh, them ladybugs like them crack houses, I reckon. If you, oh, we did this growing up. Every time we had chicken, mom said, who's going to get the wishbone? Who's going to get the wishbone? And you take the wishbone. I get it. My sister gets it. And you pull it. Whoever gets the biggest half uh, gets her wish granted or has good life. How many of you ever heard that? Raise your hand. Mom told us that all our life. I, I imagine that goes back to the time when they was about to starve to death and they was fighting over it and, and everybody's jerking. I jerked a bigger piece than you did. I reckon, I don't know. That's, that's nothing. That's ridiculous. It's ignorance. Like businessmen carrying a crystal in their pocket. You say, well, I carried that crystal, and I'm telling you, I got the job. Well, you might have had a little help from a demon because you believe stupid stuff. But the crystal didn't do it. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. Hey, if you, if you, if you put an onion underneath, a half onion underneath your bed, it will reduce your fever and take sickness away. Honestly, uh, there might be something to onions and sickness that help and stuff like that, but I don't know. I don't know about that. Anyway, that's what people you, you say. Uh, when, you, when, you, uh, when you have good fortune, in other words, you say, uh, uh, guess what? Guess what? Uh, uh, guess what? Uh, my husband's going to buy me a new car. Everything's going great. He's like, oh, uh, better knock on wood. You know why we say that? We say, if we say, Gosh, I'm just having the best day ever. Nothing could go wrong. Better knock on wood. Because we think if we knock on wood that it will take away evil attacks and keep our day from going bad. And they say that if you, if you knock on wood three times, that it'll keep bad spirits away and you'll have good luck. Think about that. Knock on wood three times. There's the nails in his hand there and in his feet. Maybe that's where that come from. Probably does. To keep away evil. But it's superstitious for a Christian to go. That does nothing. Wasting your time. Evil spirits life at you. Amen. Amen. That's right. They say, old people used to say this, you cut a lock of your hair, a grandpa's hair, put it in the Bible, and it's good luck. I mean, we're scared to take that lock of hair out of that Bible. Or a four-leaf clover. Put that four-leaf clover in that Bible. Don't you touch that kid. Something awful happened to you. Uh, 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 listen, there's a lot more. You better worry about what's in that Bible besides a four-leaf clover. You better worry about all them warnings against that sin you've been committing. Amen. Now, my mom said this all my life. said, if a bird flies in your house, that means somebody will die in just a few days. Probably what happened was that did happen a time or two and people started saying that. A bird flying in your house could, probably does have spiritual connotations because a bird is of a spirit and usually everything you can see is something, picture something you can't see. So I won't deny that a bird flying in your house might be a picture of something the devil's doing spiritually. I don't deny that. That's biblical. But if a bird flies in your house, bird flew in our house and nobody didn't die. Yet, 
but it's been months ago. You can't say it's because that bird flew in the house about six months ago. You can't say that. Uh, there's nothing to that. Now, there might be some kind of picture. I told you the other day, birds come and start hitting that glass. And we have glass in front of our house, you know, those big panes. And birds do fly right, run right into it every now and then. Just fly right into it. And every time that stuff starts happening, I start getting, I start getting uneasy. Oh, Brother Danny, that's crazy. No, because those birds are a picture of something you can't see. Yeah, I know that. I know that for a fact. Bible said back here in the book of Ecclesiastes, a bird of the air shall carry the voice. And so birds are a picture of evil spirit. Birds are a picture of the Holy Spirit. The dove came down. That dove came down there and landed uh, on Jesus in the form of the dove. That was the Holy Spirit. So birds and spirits are definitely connected. But just because a bird flies in your house don't mean nothing. Hey, did you know that putting flowers on people's graves after they're dead and gone is supposed to mean, beginning, beginning, it was to say if the flowers bloomed up, they were in perfect peace, and if it don't, then things might not be going too good for them. Uh, they might have went to hell. But uh, we do it, most of y'all do it, in just honor or memory of a loved one, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, if you really want me to be honest with you, it don't do them a bit of good. They're not in there. And it don't do you no good. It don't. It really don't. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. You love my mom and dad buried over there in Nebo at uh, McDowell Cemetery. And my sister, I, I, I never, I, you can call me heartless if you want to. I never even think about going. They're not there. They're not there. They're in heaven. They're in heaven. And if you want to do that, and remember, I'm not saying it's wrong. And people do that. I'm not saying you're wrong. But it, you, you, people, it don't. Don't don't go and talk to dirt. Don't don't go over and do that. Don't don't sit and talk to dirt. It can't hear you. They ain't in there. You might say, "Well, Daddy, if you're listening now, now Daddy might be listening. God might let Daddy listen from heaven, but he ain't in that dirt." Amen. Am I right? I'm not telling y'all wrong. I'm trying to help you so you won't be superstitious. Amen. Uh. Uh, why do we say bless you when somebody sneezes? Well, what if, some, what if somebody's heart does stop? That, why would God bless you? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like this. There's a little boy back here in the Old Testament that did die. And when his soul has come back in him, he sneezed seven times. You know, you say you can't sneeze with your eyes open. I'll give anybody in here $10 that can sneeze, a real sneeze, in the next 30 seconds. A real sneeze. That was fake. No. <laughs> was that real? That wasn't, Randy. That was about the sorriest sound of sneeze I ever now, Frankie always laughs at me when I sneeze because, buddy, when I sneeze, I sneeze like my, I let it go, buddy. Ha! Sure! I can't. That's the way a man ought to sneeze. I know people go around and say, something wrong with you. She says, that's the way you sneeze. But, but you need to, can anybody do it? It's been 30 seconds and nobody sneezed yet. You can't just up and sneeze. People in Hollywood can cry. These people make themselves cry real tears. Real tears come out. I can't do that. I can't fake it crying, and I sure can't fake a sneeze. You can, let's do it. Let's hear you. Oh, you can't? Brent, you can. Nah, come on, Biz. You can do it. Ha! So! I can Oh, fake crying. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I, some of them gospel singers turn it on, turn it off as soon as they walk out and smoke a cigarette. Uh, 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 but you know what? Uh, listen, y'all. Hey, uh, I, I think because you die when you, your heart stops, like somebody said, probably. I reckon. I don't know. Uh, I don't, I, I'm in Walmart and I say, I'll hear somebody on the next house. God bless you. Uh, it, makes me, it makes me think, what, are, you, are you a Christian? Are you don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, all right, let's see this now. Little boy, sneeze seven times, come back to life there. Hey, amen. That's right. Now, we'll, we'll get this again in a minute, but you don't have to worry about 
when you're at the gas pump and pumping your gas and it turns out comes out to be 666 yeah, I, and of course I don't have no more maybe 600 maybe 67 dollar 66 dollars and 67 maybe something like that but I know people will run it over and spill it out on the ground and everything to keep them being 666 and I'll admit I have done that myself I'll stop at 665 or run it on up to 667. But honestly, that number by itself is just a number. What it represents is bad and evil. You've got to understand that. You say, oh, it's a dollar store, it is 666. I gave her a tip. I, done, I, I, I put something back. I didn't want it. Really. You don't have to be like it. You don't have to live in fear of superstitions of a number. Now, uh, it is biblical that that number represents evil, and I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, you say, well, if I, I'm the first to find a four-leaf clover, that'll bring me good luck. No, the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and leave not thine understanding. That's the way you have right kind of luck. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at 13, and I'm going to work my way down and name you off 10 normal ones. You raise your hand if you know these. 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, the big one. Ready? Number 13 would be this. Beginner's luck. Heard that? Raise your hand. Now, what does that mean? That means first time a man ever goes and plays golf, he knocks a hole in one. And that has happened. And people say, beginner's luck, beginner's luck. Now, technically, there is no such thing. Biblically, there's no such thing as beginner's luck. For every man that knocks a hole in one, the first time he plays golf, there's 150,000 that don't. A man goes to Las Vegas and puts $10 in one time and wins a million dollars. That is not beginner's luck. Probably the devil doing that to get him hooked. Now, hey, there's no such thing as beginner's luck. There is such a thing as likely to win the first time based on odds of different time, different situations. Maybe based on odds. You start fooling with them odds and them slot machines and stuff like that, you're fooling with something. I wouldn't fool them things if I was you. I don't think Christian has the lottery. I don't think a Christian has no business betting on stuff. I don't think a Christian has no business playing games of chance. I don't. You're starting to, you're dibble dabble around in the occult. Even cards. My mom wouldn't even let us have a card uh, playing cards in our house. Now, I can't say they're wrong if you play Old Maid, uh, Uno, or, or something like that, and I have, but when you start playing games where you're depending on some other, like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, and like rolling die, uh, I got, come on, come on, come on. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Come on, come on. Come on, who? Are you talking to God? You talking to the demon? The devil? Come on, come on, come on, seven, come on, eleven. Nine, 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 nine. Uh, now, you got to be careful. You're dabbling around in the occult, messing around. And all those playing cards have occultic uh, uh, ties to them, as you've heard it preached on before. All of them, the kings, the ace, ace, the, the queen, and 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 um, all the rest of them. I don't know what all they are. I don't play cards. Um, I don't see anybody that's around and does something like that, honestly. Uh, I tell you, the only, the only thing that would be worse than that is working a puzzle. I don't know how in the world anybody could sit and do a puzzle. You, you got something I ain't got, brother. I, I tell you, I'm not made to sit and work a puzzle. Lord have mercy. I'd go crazy. Uh, I, if you ever hear me sitting down working a puzzle, you know I've lost my mind. I mean, you might enjoy it, and I'm not against you for it. I just what in the world? What in the world? You know about that blonde? She, she, she called her boyfriend. She said, you got to come over here and help me put this puzzle together. And he said, put it, look at the puzzle. Why in the world would anybody want to do that? Waste a whole good day or week. And he said, putting this, this piece in that piece. Oh, I found it. Oh, I found it. And that one, oh, oh, it's almost like, oh, I found another one. Uh, whatever floats your boat, brother. But uh, anyway, uh, he said, come over here and help me. She said, I can't. I can't get this puzzle together. I can't get it together. Come over here and help me. And he, she said, just look at, the, look at the picture on the box. That's what you do. You look at the picture. It's a farm or a barn or whatever. She said, it's just this big old rooster. And he said, well, look at the picture and go by. And she said, I can't get one piece to go by. He comes over to help him. And she's sitting there about to pull her out. And he said, put them cornflakes back in that box, you idiot. Maybe that's what it is. Now, 
they don't begin to look. Now, they say if you find a penny, if you find a penny and you pick it up, you'll have good luck all day long. Face up. Okay. If you walk under a ladder, you blaspheme the Trinity. Because it's like, it's like a pyramid is what it is. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Here's a ladder, here's a wall, here's the floor, and you're walking right through that pyramid. I wouldn't worry about it. If you, they ain't nothing wrong putting a puzzle together. There's nothing wicked or superstitious about nothing, nothing. You want to do it on a rainy afternoon, have at it. I would recommend Bible study. Uh, you're learning some scripture or be, witness somebody at the phone or something, but whatever you want to do, that's fine. How about this? Black cat. The reason a black cat is considered bad luck is because witches in the dark ages were said to have taken the form of a cat. And that might be true. That might be true. All them old scary movies, they used, there was a movie come out 30 years ago, I preached about it or something, I remember, it called Cat People. Remember that old movie? And these people were demon possessed something, they turned into cats and killed people and stuff like that. And it wasn't dogs. It's always cats. And they, they turned into them and they kill them. So a black cat has the stigma, let's say, of being bad luck. Now, it's not really. If you want to have a black cat, that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. Ain't going to hurt you if one runs right across the road in front of you, if 10 runs across the front in front of you. It means nothing. Now, man said this. He said, I got my rabbit's foot in my pocket and I keep it in my, the old timers used to keep a rabbit's foot in their pocket. And the guy said, uh, see that this? That rabbit's foot, they're going to bring me good luck. And the guy said, it didn't do the rabbit much good. <laughs> she got a three-legged rabbit running around somewhere. <laughs> he didn't have too good luck. That means it holds off evil. Like, like they say, garlic, eating garlic, and garlic will keep vampires away. Now, it'll keep me away. You eat garlic, it'll keep me away. Some of y'all don't realize how bad your breath stinks. You're like a drunk. When a drunk's drunk, he can't smell, he's smell it. But everybody else can. Just go, well, I don't, I don't smell my, yeah, everybody else can. That's why they do like this when they see you coming. You, you've been to the, you've been to the uh, uh, garlic garden and, and eat too much and you stink. Uh, but it don't keep vampires away. Not only that, they say bad luck comes in threes and deaths come in threes. There's no scripture for that at all. It might seem that way. Have you ever noticed how many people die, especially older people, and that in less than a year the spouse will die? Now that does happen a lot, but it also don't happen a lot. You just hear about it a lot. Now, so that there's nothing that says, well, Mamma died, so in a year that Papa will be dead. No, uh, there, there's nothing in the Bible about that. Sometimes God takes them home. After they've been together 50, 60, 70 years, the Lord will take one home and then take the other home in a few months. Uh, we've seen that happen uh, right here in our church. I think, like Miss Karen, uh, some of y'all have. And that's the Lord's goodness and grace of taking them home. But there's no kind of superstitious thing that says, because uh, one person died, two more people got to die in the family. It might happen, but that's the exception and not, not, not the rule. All right? Then they say this. Number seven. I'm counting down now. If you break a mirror, you'll have seven years of bad luck. Raise your hand if you heard that. Bunch of bull. Bunch of bull. I broke a bunch of mirrors. And, and I had bad luck, but that didn't, wasn't because of that. Uh, they say, if you do break one and you want to get rid of that bad luck, take all them broken pieces of the mirror and wash it in, in water and it washes away that bad luck. You're going to have bloody hands if you try to wash a broke mirror in, in water. That's what you're going to do. Uh, so there's nothing to breaking a mirror at all. And then number six, be the number 666. The number 666 is people scared to all over the world, all over the world. And there is a reason for that. Because that does represent the best man can do, and that represents the Antichrist. Now, it's not a, there's nothing wrong with the number in of, in of itself. A six, a six, a six, nothing wrong with them numbers in and of themselves. 
but it's what they represent. Make sure you understand that. Don't, don't make a fool out of yourself at work and say, I'm not doing that. It's got 666 on it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not against that. I've done that too. But really, really there's not. Then number five is knock on wood. That's hitting that cross. It's the only thing I can figure out. Number four is a wishbone. Whoever gets a big piece of Number three is a Christian says, I know I said that, but I have my fingers crossed. Now that means it's all right to tell a lie if you got your fingers crossed. Now that means that cross wipes out that lie. That's interesting, isn't it? You ever think about stuff like that? That cross negates and, and eliminates that lie. Hey, tell you this, <laughs> but it don't do it. it. You can't say, well, I know I told mama this, but I have my fingers crossed, so it don't matter. You can lie if you got your fingers crossed. That's demonic. That's demonic. Now this. You're never supposed to open up an umbrella inside the house. Everybody in here. Oh, don't open that umbrella now. I don't know why. Maybe your roof will start leaking. It'll start raining in your house. I don't know. That is unsubstantiated, ignorant superstition. And then number one, the superstitions of all superstitions, the most popular, the most feared, it's Friday 13th. Movies are made. Pictures. Songs written. Friday 13th. Lord, they born on Friday 13th. Wait. Wait till 12 o'clock. Hold it, honey. Hold it. Wait till 12 o'clock. It'll be the 14th. Hurry up and get it out. It's Friday 12th. Thursday 12th. Now, to be honest with you, there is something different about that number 13. That's biblical. Now, the Friday stuff comes from Jesus being crucified on Friday, which he was not. But they think that, and so Friday the 13th has been a day of cursing and bad luck ever since. You want to know something weird? I don't profess to understand this, and I don't know nobody that can. Friday the, thir the, the 13th falls on Friday more than any other day of the week. Wouldn't you think if there's seven days, they'd all take turns and there'd be so many Monday the 13th, Tuesday the 13th, Wednesday the 13th. There's more Friday 13th than any other day. Uh, uh, honestly, there was 688 Friday 13th in 440 years of recorded history. And only 681 thirteenths of Sunday. That was the next highest. Sunday and Wednesday, days we go to church. The second highest was Sunday and Wednesday, and then Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. There was more Friday thirteenths than any other day, with the thirteenth falling on that day. Now, in the Bible, there are Bible numerics. You study the Bible. It's very clear the number one represents God. The number two represents division. The number three represents the Trinity. The number four represents the world. North, south, east, west, fall, winter, summer, spring, uh, the, the four seasons. All right. Number five represents uh, death or grace, depending on how you've been taught, or probably a little bit of both. The number six represents man. All the way through the Bible, six is man, man made on the sixth day. Uh, the Antichrist, 666. Six is man's number. Seven, definitely in the Bible, represents completion. A complete cycle. On the, on the musical scale, on colors, seven colors, seven notes on the, well, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's it. And everything on that piano, every song in the world comes on them, song, them seven notes. Them black notes are sharps and flats and half notes. There's only seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. See, that's the same as that one. The eighth is new beginning. Do.
do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, 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 do. Same note. It's just an octave higher. You see that? So eight means new beginning. There were eight people in the flood. Come out and got the whole world to come out and start all over again. And brethren, just as sure as you're sitting there, the number 13 is connected with rebellion, with Satan, with evil, just as sure as you're sitting in that seat. That is scriptural. And I'm going to say tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you know what you need to do? You need to learn how to differentiate and, and separate your superstition from what really is true in the Word of God. Now, they look at us, they say, oh, you bunch of ignorant Christians, or oh, all that superstitious nonsense. No, our faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We sing a little song years ago and says, I need no other righteousness. I need no other claim. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. You get your faith on the, on the blessed word of God and on the rock of ages. Junk the, the mess of this world. Forget Hollywood. Forget E.T. and Friday 13th and Freddy and Nightmare on Elm Street and all that demonic witchcraft and Harry Potter and all of that stuff. And build your faith on the book that God gave us. You'll be all right. Amen. All right. I'm done. Let's stand. Let's stand tonight. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the Word of God that we can stand on. Thank you, Lord, that it's quick and powerful and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Thank you, Lord, we can discern truth from error by the Word of God. Thank you for what we studied here tonight. Bless everybody here this evening. God bless everybody. Give them a good evening. Lord, God, take care of us. Watch over us. Bless tonight as we go our separate ways. Meet back with us Wednesday. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. Have a good week. See you Wednesday night. Come, don't lay out Wednesday night. Be here and the Lord will bless you for it.